Hey, how you doing? Kieran Murphy here. How That's you doing? Uh, yeah. Thanks for okay. the call. Um, okay, so I, 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 got, I got to run something by you, and, and uh, I hope you don't laugh. I'm, I'm, I'm quite serious about this. Have you got a, lap, a, few, a computer in front of you? Uh, no. Okay. Sure. Sure. All right, so um, I'd like to file a, a kidnapping complaint and a false imprisonment complaint against um, A168. And the reason I would like to do that, and it just bear with me because this, this is a real thing. It's not me taking the piss. It's not a it's not a prank or anything. Oh, okay. Yeah. So on the Mental Health Act, the revised Mental Health Act, two thousand and one. Yeah, it says. Uh, let me just pull it up again. Um, where did it go? Had that there we go. So it says that. Uh, just read it. Start it from the beginning. Um, Section 12 of the Mental Health Act um, permits a member of Ungarda Chiacona to take a person into custody where he has reasonable grounds for believing the person is suffering from a mental disorder as a result of which there's a serious likelihood of the person causing imminent and serious harm to himself or others. Having yeah. taken the person into custody, the member or other member must make an application to a registered medical practitioner for a recommendation for the person to be removed to an approved centre and then it says in brackets, other than the central medical hospital. If the recommendation is refused, the person must be released from custody immediately. If it is granted, yeah. the member of Lungarda must take the person to the approved centre specified in the recommendation. Yeah. Now, if we, if we, if we just, um, so this isn't me, just me trying to do this without talking about the case. Um, if we block break that, the, the, I suppose the event into into blocks, like lettered blocks. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we have, uh, and we'll start it after the EOU raid. Okay. So. We have where it begins in the ambulance, so we'll, that's block A, um, and that's where I was arrested by um, A168 under, under the Mental Health Act in front of the two EMTs. Uh, then we have block B, which would be uh, the hallway in accident emergency when I was handcuffed to the gurney, being forced to shower, um, and then the, the beginning of the isolation unit. Then we have C, um, which is just the whole latter half of the isolation unit. And then we have D, which is where I wasn't discharged properly because that that came up later the next, the following day when I was uh, in the Founds Ward. And I was um, hustled out of James's and driven back to Kevin Street. Then we have block okay. E, which is um, when I arrive at Kevin Street, um, initial charges window and uh, the phone call from the side room. Um, then and block E is, is June 2020. That, that, no, that this would be um, the 30th. 2018. This would be the 30th of uh, August 2018. Okay. So this is all that same night. Going to, so block E is now just in the morning of the, the 31st. Because okay. it, it, by the time I was driven back to Kevin Street, I think it was around 2 in the morning or something. Then we have block F, which is time sitting in the interview room in Kevin Street up to when I was given Supermax. And then we yeah. have block G, which is Kevin Street up to the, the, the same interview room, um, up to the first visit by Dr. Khan. And then, yeah. we, then, we, then we end that block with um, where Khan leaves, has an argument with, with A168, actually two arguments, one in the hallway and then he was taken to an interview room and I could hear the shouting. And then uh, that ends at H, where I was released under the Mental Health Act in Kevin Street. So, so listen, before before you go any further, and I, I'm, I'm probably going to disappoint you here now, but I can't take a criminal complaint against the Garda um, in these kind of circumstances, uh, any kind of circumstances. The complaint or action by a member of the Garda she's gone has to be investigated by TSOC. So even if, if it's if a, because it's even if it's an offence, actually, because that's what that's what I had to ask. Yeah, yeah, particularly if it's going to lead to criminal charges against a, a Garda member. So now you can actually, absolutely, you can send it to me. You can break it down and, and specify each point um, as relevant to, to the particular actions at, at each time throughout the period of time from the incident onwards. Um, and I will forward it on to GSOC and I'll, I'll CC you into it and all that kind of stuff, but I'm not allowed to do any such yeah, I would probably like you to forward it on to GSOC because I, I, I have a probably like quite a quite a bad relationship with them. Um, okay. But uh, I'll just just to finish to how 
I, you know, this came about, you know, just so I could show that I wasn't sure, in any way. Sure, go ahead. So if that A, A, A through A through H, where um, where if I look at review my medical records from James's, um, it's very clear at that point, um, probably somewhere somewhere halfway through C into into just before I was was taken to to the car, that uh, and for quite I'd say most of the C unit, um, there is a prolonged period where the doctors in James's had um, refused to section me. And there's a prolonged period of, of uh, where the doctors are leaving notes in my medical records that um, A168 is attempting to coerce slash bully slash intimidate them. And um, they have contacted at that point um, Dr. Ronan Mulani. And um, he a note is left from him or written in as from him into the medical records to the other doctors who A168 is attempting to coerce, stating, um, if I, rem I think if I remember right, I think the exact wording is... Um, uh, don't do what the guardy want. Um, it, uh, it, it, it it's not legal, and it may put okay. you at a concern. Um, let a guard a doctor do it. Yeah. Okay. So you know and that was that then result in your go back to Kent Street and then following. Yeah. So so at that point, right, where, where somewhere between C and D, you have okay. the doctors had already um, refused. And a lot of that waiting around before D was Gillen arguing with the doctors repeatedly. And I, o I, I witnessed some of this where, where one of the doctors was um, um, saying, I have to go check the legality of that. I don't think that's legal. And um, when, when the doctor walked away, Gillen um, uh, talked to, I think it was Gil Foy about uh, assaulting the doctor if he didn't do what he wanted. Okay. So, um, so, it, so it, you know, we, from from that string of conversations, we extrapolated that Gillen was very well aware that, um, you know, it it had been refused and was trying to force it, and the doctors were aware of it too. Well, just just uh, again, I'm not going to argue any any of that. All of that will have to go to GSOC and stuff. But is is there a point where the doctors would have told him that a guard a doctor has to? make the recommendation no it did as, it, as it is recorded in the medical records it's it's Gillen won't let let it let go of the let go of it even after okay. being told no okay. and and that um the it would appear from the way Mulani phrases it in the notes that um you know give it to it say say it back, anyway. say it has to be a guard a doctor to, like, to, to sort of get them out of the the, the pressure and the concern Absolutely, and that's uh, that's happened before, where yeah, there's been that kind of um, impasse, and the medical practitioners will decide how they want or how they think it should proceed further. In, in my experience, that may well have been resulting in advice to Garda Gillen by the hospital staff that he needed to go with you back to the station and deal with a Garda doctor. Yeah, except uh, it's not really recorded which, which like that. Which would, which would be realistic in terms of the process uh, and within that section so it might but listen I'm not going to make any great opinion on it I'm just going to give you a guide of what I think yeah. it might um, well as, as, as it's not recorded like that and and then you have you have a point where um, if Gillen didn't tell Can that it had been refused yeah. in James's that's yeah. that's, a, that's, a, that's a secondary offence um, okay. because he, he has to have told Can that it had been refused once before yeah, he would have had to do that. Yeah, yeah and that would, um, that would be a unusual. Yeah. And and um, I was pretty much told by one of the doctors that that uh, you know that the the basic you know check of do you hear voices, all that stuff. That there was there was no, there was nothing really wrong with me except for like shock. Yeah. Okay. And and I do and then I also have that you know the the, the witnessing the the arguments with Gillen and the doctors and Gillen then talking about you know the constant. Um, Trying to pressure them into it, and, and that they wouldn't do what he wanted, and that was his exact words. And um, yeah. you know, so I have a moment where there is an awareness between Gillen, and then Gillen has expressed an awareness that you know it's been refused, and he's he's okay. he's trying to push for it. But at the point where it's refused in James's, I should have been released immediately because that's exactly what it says in the act. I, I think, yeah, I, I think that's open to interpretation on the ground that the, the 
local doctors would have advised Gerard. Now, is it 